Hi everybody, I'm Vessel and this is my guide to building Ultimate Stereo System Episode 6, the crossover. Now, I've briefly talked about the crossover before, but um, today I'm going to give you a more in-depth explanation of why we need crossovers. So crossovers is probably the most important thing in this system that I'm designing. That's what makes it unique. The fact that it's got an active crossover instead of a passive crossover. The only difference here is that an active crossover is in front of the amplifiers. In other words, we filter the unamplified signals and the passive crossover is on the output of the amplifier. In other words, it's already the signal that was meant to go to the speakers and then it's passively filtered before it goes to the tweeters, mid-range and subs. As I've mentioned in the first episode, there are no ideal speakers. In other words, there's no speakers that can produce frequencies all the way from 20 Hz up to 20 kHz. So because of that, we need to have different frequencies or different speakers. So we've got big speakers to do the bass, medium-sized speakers to do the mids, and then small speakers called tweeters to do the highs. And the problem is you can't go and put a low frequency on a speaker that wasn't designed to do that. Because what actually happens is that the cone starts deflecting at lower frequencies, and that, of course, generates distortion. So you've got to make sure you filter out all the low frequencies that that speaker can't handle before it actually gets to the speaker. And that's what the whole purpose of the crossover is. Now obviously because if you've got a tweeter and a mid-range and you're filtering the frequencies out from the tweeter so that you don't first of all damage it and it doesn't cause any distortion, you also need to make sure that your mid-range is cut or has got a, a low pass filter on it so that your mid-range and your tweeter don't work on the same frequencies because that would cause a spike in volume at that point. So a single crossover is actually just two filters. You've got a low pass filter and a high pass filter. And then a single source that feeds both of those. That simply means that now all the higher frequencies will go out there and all the lower frequencies will go out there. So you can connect this to your tweeter and you can connect this one to your woofer. If you want to split the signal going to the tweeter in two, like I'm doing here because I'm building a freeway system, you have to put another crossover on here. Low pass and high pass. So another two filters being fed from the high pass output there and that will give you a band pass filter here for your mid range and then all the highs for the tweeter. So a filter is simply an RC network. If you've got a capacitor, resistor, like that, then this will be a high pass filter because high frequencies can go through the capacitors but lower frequencies can't. If you've got the two swapped around, that becomes a low pass filter. Because now all the high frequencies are shorted out by the capacitors, but all the low frequencies are free to pass through it. Essentially any filter, whether it's a high pass or low pass filter, only has two characteristics. The first one is the frequency, the cutoff frequency and that's the point where you start rolling off. And the other one is your roll off rate and that determines how quickly the filter rolls off after you've reached that frequency. For a single RC filter like I've just shown, your roll off rate would be 6 dBs per octave. That means every time the frequency doubles, you'll have half the output voltage. This is considered to be the lowest roll-off rate you can possibly have. And it's not ideal for speakers. So obviously the higher roll-off rate you want, the more complicated the circuit will be. So what I'm building here is called a fourth order, opposed to where this one was called a first order. And it means it's got four sets of RC networks inside it. And that will give me a roll-off rate of 24 dBs. Per octave. So here's the schematic for the crossover. So this is only showing one of the two channels. 
And this particular schematic is showing the 240 hertz high pass and low pass filters. Now originally I said I'm going to design them to be 250 hertz and 4.9 kilohertz, but unfortunately, you know, you only get um, components in certain values, and it worked out that I'm going to get 240 hertz and uh, 4.6 kilohertz. So the first section here is just a subtractor, same as we've had on the pre-amplifiers, and then we start with the high pass filters. And you can see here are the RC elements sitting over here. So this one is the easiest to understand. We've got a capacitor and that's being shorted out to ground with a resistor. So in the beginning when you've got low frequencies this will be an open circuit and this will have some amount of resistance and that means you'll have high attenuation so low frequencies can't pass here. But as the frequency goes higher and higher this capacitor will start conducting more and more current and this, this attenuator will work less and less. Similarly, the other RC elements are sitting over here in the feedback from the operational amplifier. You can see, so we've got one, two, three, four RC elements, and that's why this is called a fourth order filter. On the low pass side, the only difference is that the resistors and capacitors have been swapped around, and now you can see when you've got high frequencies, this will be a short circuit, and low frequencies will pass straight through, high frequencies won't pass through because they're being short circuited out by this capacitor. And then the same on this side as well, we've got one, two, three, four RC elements. Then lastly on the low pass filter, I just have a, a DC elimination circuit out at the end. So there's another RC filter here set at about one hertz. And that's just to make sure we don't send any DC out to the power amplifiers. So this is the wiring diagram for the crossover. There's a main supply plug over here, a power switch, the power supply that gives us plus and minus 15 volts. I've bought this out, um, it's made by Meanwell and it's a 25 watt plus and minus 15 volt supply. The supply feeds both the low pass or the low frequency crossover card and the high frequency crossover card. So each channel, the left channel and the right channel, goes into the first 250 hertz or 240 hertz crossover. The low pass side goes straight out the terminals to the two amplifiers driving the subwoofers. Then the high pass goes into the 4.6 kilohertz crossover and that again gets split up into two parts, the low pass that goes to the mid um, amplifier and then the high pass that goes to the tweeters amplifier. Also have a little LED here as a power indicator on the front of the module. So this is the enclosure. Instead of making my own enclosure as I've done with the amplifiers, I just bought this enclosure from electronic component store. And I also bought this power supply. Uh, it's much more cost effective to buy out smaller power supplies than try and building your own. And these are the two cards that I've built. This is the 240 hertz high and low pass filter. And this is the 4.6 kilohertz high and low pass filter. So if you want to see how to assemble these cards, you can always go back and have a look at episode 4. And I'm also going to go ahead and wire this crossover now, according to the wiring diagram. If you want to go back and see how that's done, you can look at episode 3. So that's the completed crossover. And the only noteworthy thing here is you can see I've wired the mains wiring in a completely different path than the rest of the signal wiring. That's just to make sure that we don't get interference from the mains frequency on the audio signals. Okay, so what I've got now is I've got the oscilloscope set up on the crossover with the one channel on the high pass output and the other channel on the low pass output. Because I just want to show you what actually happens with the output of the two. And what I've got is I've got my cell phone connected to the input of the crossover and I've downloaded an app that will give me a, a variable frequency output. 
So at the moment that's 100 hertz, and you can see the first channel, the low pass, is full volume and the second channel, the high pass, is barely moving. So you can see it's already started letting some of the um, 100 hertz over to the high pass, but very, very little. So now I'm just going to start moving up the frequency. That's 110 hertz, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, and you can see the high pass is starting to get higher and higher, and the low pass is get starting to get smaller and smaller. 170, 190, and 200 hertz. So you can see that um, now the two are getting very, very close together. Just going to move the time scaling a bit. 210, 230. You can see 240, that is where I designed my crossover to be. And you can see that they are almost identical in size. So that means this crossover is actually working at 240 hertz. And another thing that you can see is the two waveforms are exactly in phase. And that's a characteristic of a properly designed crossover. So if you have a crossover that's not designed properly, the two might be slightly out of phase. Going up, 260, 280, 300 hertz, 350, and... 400 hertz and you can see now it's the opposite so the um, high pass output is very high now and the low pass is very small okay so I've now connected up my KEF IQ 30s to my amplifiers and crossover and I'm gonna play you a couple of different outputs from the crossover and also I'm gonna play the, the full frequency before the crossover so you can hear the difference between them. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.